Today on Lockdown Red Wings, Alex Dabrinkit is the NHL's first star of the week and previewing the Seattle Kraken. Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer for the Daily J, a WWJ News Radio podcast. Well, Scott is the host over at Lockdown Tigers, as well as a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. And today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code Lockdown NHL to get up to $100 matched on your first deposit. Terms and conditions do apply. So see Sleeper's terms of use for details. And in today's episode, guys, we're going to we're going to talk about a couple different things. One, Alex Brinkett is your first star of the, uh, of the NHL this past week, which is fantastic. The NHL introduced its own advanced analytics, which is really cool to see. Probably the best, things, best thing to come out of the NHL in quite some time. Uh, the NHL introduced, or the ESPN is doing its first frozen frenzy uh, today by the time you're lo- listening to this. And I have some mixed feelings on the matter. I don't know how Scotty feels. We'll get to that, obviously. And then we'll be finishing it off with the preview of the seattle kraken and before we get to the alex to brink stuff scotty you know god man whew, alex to brink it scotty alex to brink it i just remind you guys jake woolman giveaway a lot of you guys have already entered the giveaway it's going to be uh going to be quite the process of selecting a winner this time around for sure but we have a jake woolman game use stick comes courtesy of hockey town authentics inside the little caesars arena team store Shout out to them for providing us a six stick for this giveaway. They have a ton of cool authentics there. So make sure you check them out if you ever want to buy your own game used products or autographed merchandise. But to enter the giveaway, you just find the tweet on Twitter. And I'll probably, I should probably pin it actually. I'll pin the tweet on Twitter. I already did. Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate that. I sometimes I forget we can both use that. We're a long ways from when we used to just argue with one another through the same account. Uh, so you follow us and then you retweet that. And like that tweet. It's as simple as that on Facebook. Uh, you share the post, follow the Facebook account on Instagram. You add it to your story, tag us in that story, and make sure you follow the Instagram account. And as long as you follow those, you'll be good to go and you'll be entered in the giveaway. Uh, you guys are making it hard on us already, but it's great to see it. so many people engaged wanting the Jake Wallman game you stick. Can't say as I blame you guys. Yeah, super cool. Super cool. Scotty, it didn't come to my surprise, did not come to my surprise when the NHL announced its three stars of the week and they had Alex Dabrinkit listed as <laughs> number one star in the last week, the week ending in October 22nd, so Sunday, by the time people are listening to this. He had eight points this past week, five goals, three assists to be the number one star. I believe it was Alex Georgiev was the, the goaltender for the Colorado Avalanche was the second star. And I'm trying to remember exactly who the third star was. My brain immediately saw it was Sam Reinhardt of the Florida Panthers. Three three games played, five goals, one assist for six points with the Florida Panthers. And uh, those are your three stars of the week. But obviously, most notably, Alex Dabrinka just continues his trend of complete dominance here to start the season. Yeah, man. Well, it's, I mean, it's cool to see him get uh, acknowledged nationally for sure but i mean statistically it's not like it's a surprise right like it's not like it's not like you hear it and you're like oh wow that you know how did he, how did he pull that off like no he's leading in nearly in every category in the nhl currently so um yeah no super cool awesome to see the the national recognition uh yeah the boys are buzzing man the boys are absolutely buzzing too and it's a little bit of deja vu too because like halfway i think it was like wednesday of last week the nhl pa announced that he, the Players Associ- Association, Players Association, can't say that word apparently, right. announced that Derek Brinkett was the player of the week for them too. So he's been named player of the week two separate times with two different organizations, once the NHL and once the Players Association. Uh, I think the stats were like eerily similar too in that yeah. span. I think it might've been like eight points, five goals, three assists uh, in that span as well because their span was a little bit different. I'd have to go back and double check my graphic. I could be wrong. It might've been six points and then along those lines. But regardless, like heck of a start for Alex to bring it. And, and we can't say enough good things about the way he is. He has begun the season and such an immediate, huge impact he has had with the Detroit Red Wings. I mean, we talked a lot in the offseason, Scotty, about how getting a 40 goal score, a guy who you believe can score you 40 goals is going to go a long way to 
bringing this team to another level. We didn't think it would immediately make them like contenders or anything because they had other holes to fill. Meiserman did a good job. We're seeing early yet, still early, but through six games, he's filled every single hole. But I, I, I am kind of still wowed at how fast of an impact he has had with the Detroit Red Wings, I think. And it's had a huge impact, obviously, on Dylan Larkin, too, because he's reached 11 points a ton fat. We talked about yesterday how Dabrinkit reached 12 points or seven goals. Was it seven goals in like 27 percent fewer games than it did in Ottawa? I don't exactly remember exactly what you said. But he has been absolutely great, and he's had a huge impact on the other players as well. So I, I just, you cannot say enough good things about what Alex Dabrinkit has brought to the Detroit Red Wings right now. Yeah, well, I mean, like you said, this is something dating back to what, January, February of <laughs> this mm-hmm. year that we had highlighted as like this team needs a, a goal score. This team needs someone who can consistently, even if it's not like, you know, like we weren't even asking for really like a 40, 45 like, <laughs> goals, goals a year, like type of player. And uh, we were like, we'd be happy with like 30, 35. Right. If we had, a, if we had someone who could consistently like guarantee 30, like that was like what we were kind of shooting for. And uh, yeah, like we're seeing why, right? Like we talked about, you know, if the, if we just had that, or if like that, that hole was filled, like what could this team do? And um, it, it's a, it's a six game sample size that is pretty much, you know, guaranteed not to be sustainable or, 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 or well, I shouldn't say replicable, maybe, and, you know, they get hot on six games again. It's That's not that big of a sample size, but it, it's obviously not sustainable over 82, but we are seeing like, hey, if you give this team someone who can just put the puck in the back of the net that they can rely on to score, it not only helps the team, just like raises the floor a little bit, but it raises the ceiling too because of players like, uh, you know, how many points in a season can Larkin get if he stays healthy now with, you know, playing with somebody like to bring it on his line. And the line has been... Great. How about Alex to break it, man? How about Alex to break it? Um, and the, the tweet that I butchered and I'll reference now was the Will Birchfield tweet you had tweeted from you talked about yesterday. Yeah. Uh, it took Alex to bring it 27 games to score seven goals last season, took him six this season in his last 40 goal season. It took him 13 ga- games to score seven. And then I think Jim Costa over 97 one also had an interesting tweet today as well. See if I can find it. He's a very active user. So how, who knows how far ba- down the line that is already with him. Uh, so he said in his tweet, if he doesn't score a single goal for the next 10 games, he's still on be on pace for 41 goals. <laughs> That's how good he has been playing right now. Yeah. I mean, he's on pace for over 82 goals a seat across the season right now. <laughs> it's not sustainable. And he's shooting I'm pretty sure at, it's a hundred. It might be a hundred. Yeah. I'm well, sure oh, right I now it's like. 105 if he plays 82 or something like that. <laughs> which is not sustainable which i mean i think kind of leads us perfectly into the next part of the conversation here scotty in which the nhl introduced its own advanced analytics department website called nhl edge so the last couple of years the nhl has been tracking player data and uh puck data through there's like a little chip inside the puck i believe and there is you can actually notice it if you ever look at the back of an nhl player's jersey during a broadcast you'll see just to the right of the Adidas logo on the back, there is like a bump and that is where the trackers go so they can track player data. And so this is, this goes back. Let's see how many years this goes back. This goes back to the start of the 2021, 22 season. So you have three years of play player data now. And um, this website's live and it tracks for players, top skating speed, speed bursts over 20 miles an hour, skating distance in miles, top shot speed, miles per hour, Shots on goal, shooting percentage, goals, offensive zone time uh, at even strength. And it just kind of gives you an another method of tracking advanced data with players and give you a better insight at what this player's strengths are. And why I said this was a perfect transition is because the first person that every single Red Wings fan was going to look up on this website was Alex Tabrinkit. You know, is the first one I looked at, and he has been absolutely phenomenal for the Detroit Red Wings thus far. Uh, when you look at the player data, Scotty, you can see here, in fact, let me zoom in a little bit so that people who are watching on YouTube can see. But so far this season, Scotty, uh, through the six games played, he is his top skating speed is 21.63, where the league average for a forward is 21.31 miles per hour. That puts him at the 71 percentile. So he's in the top 
29% in the league at uh, top speed. His speed bursts over 20 miles an hour are seven. League average is six. So he's in the top 69 percentile. I like that. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, skating distance 17 miles top shot speed 81.75 now this one's interesting scott and i want to talk about this because this has him the one part of his entire all his different percent percentiles that's below 50 percent is his top shot speed which is 81 where the league average is 78 which is interesting yeah yeah i mean uh, it- it's like it's just top, right? Like it's not average. So, well, this is interesting because his top shot speed is above above the average for forward. So, why is he in the bottom fifty percentile? Maybe the percentile is not forward dependent. It says forward slash D, but it says by yeah position. for that column, not for the percentile column. Yeah, that's. I'd have to look into that. That one's interesting. Like defensemen are obviously gripping and ripping slap shots. So, and this is, and obviously this is still very new to all of us. I'm still trying to make heads or tails of it. It's another. I, I, I'm trying to be very careful not to get overwhelmed by all of this data because now we have another resource for advanced analytics, which is great. And this one's actually NHL sponsored, which is fantastic that they're doing this and it's all public. Um, you can see his shooting percentage, Scotty is 42.1%, which is absolutely not sustainable. No, it is. But overall you see on the circle graph here, he, he is like one of the top players in the league in pretty much every single category, every single statistical category. It's been phenomenal. And the thing I wanted to talk about, like you can see his shot speed, it claims he's below 50th percentile and his top shot speed is 81 miles an hour so far. And the reason like that's so low in my interpretation would be because he takes a lot of snapshots and wrist shots, which yeah. are historically slower shots. You kind of mentioned it already where uh, defensemen take a lot more slap shots. It would, that would indicate is because he takes a lot of snapshots and wrist shots. That's why his speed's lower. And that's why he's lower in that category. So this isn't like necessarily trying to like wait, like this is actual empirical data and not so much like expected data. So this is actual things, actual data you can physically gather. It's not like expected where it's kind of trying to assume what would have happened where you can get into the muck. This is like actual really cool stuff. I thought by the NHL. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's <clears throat> the major league baseball has a pretty similar. It looks like this is kind of what it's based off of uh, baseball savant for the MLB is has percentiles and a lot of data and, and stuff. And the fact that the NHL is, Catching up and giving the fans a resource pretty similar is really, really cool. Uh, Baseball Savant's one of my favorite websites, and I'd imagine this will be too. So, Yeah, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I want to kind of have a little, a couple little early criticisms. It's early yet for this, uh, but then we'll move on. I know people don't want to talk, hear me talk about advanced analytics for 30 minutes, so stay tuned. But first, got to talk to you guys today about the Sleeper app. Alex to bring it scores a hat trick. The Detroit Red Wings win a Stanley Cup. And if you want to win 100 times your money, play Daily Fantasy Hockey on the Sleeper app. These are all possible scenarios for the season, but to have a chance at winning big, you need Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper. As the official Daily Fantasy app of the Lockdown NHL Network, Sleeper is our top choice for Daily Fantasy sports, especially Daily Fantasy Hockey. With Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests with studs like Alex Brinkett, Dylan Larkin, Lucas Raymond, and so many more. All you need to do is pick more or less on stats for these stars through stats like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more. You heard me, Red Wings fans, 100 times payout on Sleeper, so you can start paying attention and get your picks right so you could win big. Use promo code Locked on NHL, and you'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions do apply. That's Locked on NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Also got to talk to you guys today about game time. Game time, guys. Listen, we've all had frustrating experiences trying to buy tickets on an app. It can be all those extra hidden services and fees that they give you. All of a sudden, your ticket that you thought was $30 is $60, $90. Well, with game time, you don't get that hassle, and it's so much easier. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All-in prices show your total upfront, so you know exactly what you're getting 
without hidden fees. Buy tickets in two seconds with two taps. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets, finding exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, hockey, concerts, and more. And with zone deals, you can pick the seat and section and game time. I'm sorry, you can pick the section and game time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Segment two, Locked On Red Wings podcast. The only thing I want to say about this new Edge feature, Scotty. As soon as I find our background, there it is. Boom, we're back. Uh, so in the zones, when it's trying to show, you know how when people do like show you maps, usually the darker colors are better. And this is a real nitpicky thing. I understand that completely. I'll throw this back up here, actually. So I'm going to go back to this background. Um, the better above league average you are, it's lighter on the graph. And the lower below league average you are, it's darker on the graph. And that's like the complete inverse. It's not very intuitive to what a lot, a lot of people are doing. You think of what other people are doing, and the darker the color is, means the better that the team is doing in that given area. So that's a very small critique, but it also doesn't show you the overall percentile. And I know it would be a kind of a pain in the butt to try and take all those percentiles, put them together, and give you an overall score. But like that's why J Fresh's cards are so popular, because it takes all those micro stats and all those analytics and all those different percentiles, and he, he accumulates them into one percentile that kind of gives you an idea. It, it's not... One size fits all. Sometimes it doesn't always speak 100% true, but you can see again, 71 percentile, 69 percentile, 93 percentile. If it came all together and give you one percentile, I think that'd make it a lot more easily consumable for a ton of different people. But again, those are just small nitpicks. Overall, I think this is a great first step for the NHL to embrace advanced analytics. Yeah, I mean, like uh, an overall percentile for what? Like what? The player. Yeah, but like... Like Jay Fresh's is war. Like it's a projectile yeah. war. Like that is that that is it's not just like, oh, like we're just combining a bunch of stuff and here's the number. Like it is the stat war. Like well, give me war. <laughs> so like what is like what combining all those percentiles together like gets you what? Like I I, I think I don't know. Well, like I, I for, again I, I default to the the baseball version of this, which has been around for five or six years now. And it's pretty it's pretty similar. And I I think that um, there are plenty of stats, like individual number stats rather than percentile stats that give you, you know, like one number to base off, you know, war, for example, that you can like base off of and compare and contrast other players. So I don't know if you necessarily need, if you necessarily need like, a, you know, all these percentiles mashed into one percentile for some reason. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, again, like Jay Fresh's is like the statistic war. Like, I guess they could just mm. do that too. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what just like putting like slaps, slap shot speed percentile and then mash it with like, like skate speed or something. Like, I don't know, like what, what would that even really look like? Well, I mean, we see kind of what that might look like, not necessarily with these types of statistics, but with the game, this hockey stat cards, right? Game score is one of those analytics values that yeah. does. And that one has its flaws too. Like I don't, I, I, I love Dom's work, but I, I have my issues with how he calculates some of those things as well. But, you know, that's one thing that takes a lot of different attributes and tries to give you one concrete number. Again, there's huge flaws with that as well. It's not perfect. It's not an end-all, be-all. Sure. But I think it'd be a little bit easily, more easily consumable. And it's going to take people way smarter than me to try and figure that yeah, out. Yeah. God knows I, I wouldn't like, be able to. For those type of stats, I'm not really sure, like, there's a that's purpose fair. in that. Like, it's, again, it's like, it's like, like, physical, like accomplishments more yeah. so than it is you know like expected well, goals for like like statistics you know what i mean there's like a there's a difference between like to measuring tools versus stats i'm not really sure what like combining the percentiles on a bunch of tools would really give you well and that's what's really cool about this edge too is because of the fact that it is like actual physical empirical data yeah, it's, it's cool. not just trying to assign a assumed value and i love goals expected goals for percentage like that's we one know. of my favorite stats, right? <laughs> I love Corsi. Although Corsi is an empirical data, it's straight up shot attempts. That one's very simple to sure. track. But any expected data you have, like goal saved above expected, is trying to apply like a type of assumption using other ideas that are way beyond my wavelength of understanding. 
Whereas what's really nice about edge is it gives you that actual physical data. So you can track like yeah. who has the hardest shot, who is the fastest skater. Um, there have been early critiques about like a couple of the debt. Some of the data from a couple of years ago seems very highly inflated compared to this year's just trying to figure out what's hundred percent accurate. So the tracking sure. itself might have to improve, but I really like overall what this is going to give us as an additional tool to help break down games for our purposes. We just have to be careful not to get bogged down in it because now there's so much it's great to have. I'm not complaining. Good problem to have, but there's just so much of it. I personally have to be careful in doing a game breakdown after a game happens to not spend 20 minutes talking about edge and natural stat trick and evolving hockey. I love that stuff, but you got to keep the, the eyes on the ice, right? Got to keep <laughs> supplemental help supplemental. Uh, so sure. going to take another quick break. Uh, and when we come back, we'll move on to the preview of the Seattle crack and it kind of goes hand in hand with the fr frozen frenzy stuff. So we can marry those two together. So stay tuned to segment three of locked on red wings. But first, I got to talk to you guys today about FanDuel. Snap into the action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on, in on the action. This app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Segment three, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Scotty, so Tuesday is the official first frozen frenzy in the NHL, and that's something that ESPN is doing. It's kind of basically NFL red zone for the NHL, where all 16 teams, are. there's going to be 16 games with all 32 teams playing, and you're basically going to be able to choose a multitude of, I think, up to four different games you can watch all at once on ESPN. The ESPN app, I think, is the one that's showing it through ESPN+. Plus. That, of course, means that there's going to be local blackouts, if I'm recalling correctly. But because of this, they've highly staggered the start times of the games today by the time you were listening to this. And that's a good thing and a bad thing. NHL needs to stagger their start time so more people have the ability to watch their games. I know that was a big problem last week where there was like six games and all of them started at 7 o'clock, so you could only ever watch one game at a time. But this is what happens when you go too far the other direction because there are 16 games. The Red Wings are playing a home game that doesn't start until 8.15, and that, to me, is unacceptable. And I, I it's not that big of a deal in the end, but at 8.15 Eastern East Coast start time is, is ridiculously late for a weekday. Yeah, it is. It's. I mean, it's like a day, so, and like, like I, I mean, if the the new start time for Red Wings games was eight fifteen, I'd be upset about it. But it's like it's a Tuesday night, like in October. Like, yeah, you know but that, I mean? like, that I'll, start I'll, time. Sorry, I cut you no, off. No, no, that, that was pretty much my point. Like, you know, they're they're trying to debut a new thing. They wanted to pick a day where, uh, obviously, they they scheduled it this way, but they wanted to make a day where every single team in the league played. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, we're, we're playing a, a West coast team. So like if it would start at 4 PM for like the people watching in Seattle. Um, so I think they're trying to kind of find a best of both world things. Um, yeah. and yeah, it's like, it's a day. Like, I'm I'm not going to get, I don't know. I'm not going to get too upset about it. Yeah. But the problem with that becomes because it is a weekday and again, it is a day. So I'm not. I'm not trying to make a bigger deal out of it than it is. I just don't like it because you think about people who are trying to go to the game on a weekday. Like, that's going to affect in-person attendance. And the fact that it's later than the regular home, like the regular home start time, those two factors combined might affect, you know, the performance, at least in a very minuscule way that the team puts out there. Because th there's a possibility that people aren't going to want to go to a game that starts that late because the game's not going to end until after 11 o'clock. People have to work the next day because it's on a Tuesday. Why is this not on a Saturday or a Sunday? Oh, yeah, they don't want to compete with the NFL. So it's like the NHL is constantly trying to cater to TV packages, which I understand because that's where the bulk of the money is going to come for the league itself, not the individual teams, but the league itself through these broadcasting deals. Uh, uh, Detroit has its own deal with Bally, and that's where their TV rights come in. But while I love the Frozen Frenzy concept, like it's so cool that you can do like watch – all these games all at once, like a red zone style. It's so sick. At the same time, it's frustrating as a Red Wings fan. And I'm, I'm, I'm not, I am not trying to, it probably sounds like I care more than I do. Like, like you said, it's one game, 
but I don't want to see this become kind of like a common thing where they're messing with start times, making it real late for home games on a weekday because they want to uh, please appease the, the TV markets, the TV deals like ESPN. That's just my, my one concern. Like if it's a one-time thing, that's different. Or if it's on a weekend, that's different, but you cannot consistently continue to do 16 games on a Tuesday and your Eastern Eastern conference teams are playing at eight 15. So you stagger the ice times enough. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? I think if that becomes a consistent thing, then it becomes an issue. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. If, if obviously if the, like I said, if the new wings home start time is like eight 15 or eight 30, then like, I'll be upset. Um, but until that happens, it's, it's a Tuesday in October. Yeah. <laughs> like that. I mean, the tigers moved their, first pitch start time back half an hour this season. Like I can't imagine that, that, you know, the, the wings under same ownership as the tigers are like really fixed into start games at eight 30. Like I can't really fast. No. And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to imply that they're going to make it an everyday thing. When I say like consistently becomes a thing, I mean, like if this is a, becomes a once a week thing or even a twice a month thing like that, that just mess with the start times like that is going to become, I think, more frustrating to people who don't care for frozen frenzy and are just fans of their local markets, then it is going to be a plus for people who like the frozen frenzy. You know, like I just, I'm not trying to say that they, this is a slippery slope and the Red Wings are going to have eight 30 start times for the rest of the season. That's not going to happen. That's absolutely not going to happen. But if this becomes more common where it's like I said, once a week, twice a month, like even that is just like, you're going to start miss. You're going to start, upsetting a lot of fans and uh but again i'm 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 maybe i mean like again like we just don't know what we don't know like i my interpretation of it was more of like we're debuting it so we're gonna do this one day so everybody can get a feel for what it's gonna look like and then from here on out it'll you know what i mean like we're not i don't know i i maybe again maybe my like pulse on the situation is is totally uh, wrong but like i i didn't i don't know i didn't i interpreted tuesday as like oh this is like the debut of it so that's why the schedule is the way it is and not like oh we're gonna have like every tuesday's frozen frenzy day um, <laughs> but i don't know well like i said like we'll <laughs> we'll see i uh, I, I don't know but yeah. uh, i mean conceptually i think that having something similar to red zone for hockey is is probably a good thing for the sport assuming again i i agree with you if it does end up kicking uh you know a bu- messing up a bunch of start times then it's going to be a sl- it is going to be a slippery slope but assuming it doesn't i think that conceptually it's a good thing for the sport and the marketing so yeah overall like it again I, i'm making it sound like i care more than i i really do it's just i per I just don't like the idea of an 815 start time. Yeah, yeah. No, I get you. I, I, I'm I don't being either. Baby. Again, I I don't want to be recording until 1230 in the morning every day. So like <laughs> I mean, maybe a little bit of our personal bias. Is right. Yeah. Like I, I feel you. <laughs> Overall, like, again, I, I agree with you conceptually. I think Frozen Frenzy is a cool idea. I just don't want to see that become a trend where you're seeing sure. a lot more 815 start times because they want to play all 32 teams on the same day. Yeah. You could no, do half right. the league and you'd still have a really good Frozen Frenzy. Like, right. Anyways, That's my point is like, I, I think. I think from here on out, at least again, my interpretation of the the situation is like it'll be more, you know, for stuff like that than it will like, mm-hmm. oh, we're going to go out of our way to make sure that all 16 teams are playing all at the same time, you know, once or twice a month to make sure that this happens. But we'll see. We'll see. I, I'm excited for the debut of it, though. I'm pumped to watch it and see how it looks. When it's going to be a good game as the Red Wings are going to be shooting for their sixth straight win. Yes. Uh, Seattle Kraken coming to town. Kraken off to a really sluggish start. One, four, and one, fifth in the Pacific Division. They have two pretty hefty injuries to their roster as well. Brandon Tanev is on the IR. Last year, he had 35 points in 82 games. He's beginning to slow down a little bit here in these last few years. Um, but he's been a really good piece for the Seattle Kraken team early on. He's always been a pretty solid depth forward. Uh, 35 points last year. Again, that was, I say slowing down and uh, that was in 82 games, of course. So prorated his gate, his 25 point year in Pittsburgh would have been better. Stats, but only, baby. He only played 68 games because of COVID-19, but he's a really good depth forward for them, uh, in Seattle. And then also you have Andre Burakovsky, who is out as well. And the last year he had 39 points in 49 games played really good. 
uh, another winger for them. So they're missing two of their key wingers in their set in, in their forward core. That's going to be a huge blow. This is a team that's kind of down bad right now. And you're a team that's rolling. So don't fall into this. This clearly screams to me trap game. And that's what I don't want it to become because we saw last year, how good the Seattle Kraken can be. You can't take them lightly. You just got to keep playing the way you're playing and don't, don't take them lightly. Yeah, man. Maddie buckets, Michigan man, baby coming back, uh, coming back home. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is still a good team. Like I, I don't really take in the same breath that I, I don't think the wings are, are going to win the president's cup this year is, you know, the same reason why I don't think the, <laughs> why the, I don't think the Kraken are going to be like one of the worst teams in the NHL just uh, after, you know, six games. So, uh, good hockey team had a great year last year, really young, like fun up and coming core, uh, I, their entire like organizational history up to this point is pretty fascinating to me. Like, you know, they, the, the Knights did more of like the, Oh, we have to win now, you know, and took everybody's no matter how old they were like best player to like mm-hmm. kind of make a competitor right now. And then Seattle at the time of the, their expansion draft did like the opposite is what people were saying. Like, Oh, they took, you know, like all the young kids and, uh, and, and whatnot are going to have a high draft pick and et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, but, like year two, they were in the postseason. Like anyway, you know what I mean? Like they, they're really fun. I think Maddie Beneers is, is uh, I'm obviously biased because I'm a Michigan fan, but like um, I think he's probably going to be the, uh, the the focal point of that team going forward. And uh, yeah, man, I, I, I don't really take, I don't really take them lightly despite records. So I agree with you. This is, I don't really, I heard somebody else, maybe it was on the broadcast. I'm trying to remember where I saw it. I, I heard somebody else use the term trap game and like, like we're gonna lose again. Like not every game, <laughs> not every game is just a trap game until we lose. Like that's not what a trap game is. Um, like this is a good hockey team. Like sometimes you just lose to good teams. Not you know you you, you don't go you don't go fifty and thirty two and the thirty two losses are all trap games. But um, I think that's being thrown a lot a little uh, a little loosely, uh, given where the wings are at currently. Like if we would have lost to Columbus, like that would have been like oh this is a trap game because you know like Johnny Hockey or whatever like. This is just like a good hockey team, I think. So, uh, yeah, you gotta you gotta step up and, and defend home ice as well. Something we talked I mean, about a lot over the off season. I literally just used the term trap game, like right. That's why I brought it five up, minutes yeah. ago. <laughs> but and the, and the point, I, st- I I do think it is a trap game. So we're I guess the third time we've disagreed in this episode. Kind of crazy. <laughs> we don't normally disagree this much. Um, you being the you being the reason, me being the hyperbole in this episode. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you coming at me with facts and logic, but. I do actually legitimately think this is a trap game, and that's only because of the fact that they've gotten off to such a slow start. They lost four straight games to start the season, 1-1, and then they most recently lost to the New York Rangers. So, And that's why I think it is a trap game. There's a there's a People are going to see them with key injuries, playing poorly, and I don't think, you know, I say this every single time, you're an NHL hockey player, you should go out there ready to play every single game, but maybe you start believing in your own hype. Uh, winning five in a row and having the most goals scored in the league and having the league leader and points and goals on your team, you know, and then you come in and you're like, we're just going to keep rolling. And next thing you know, you get punched in the mouth by the Seattle Kraken who were took second in their division last year, because like you said, they are a good team. A trap game to me doesn't mean the team's bad. It just means it's a team that maybe is underperforming at the moment, or like you said, could be a bad team, but, in this instance, this is a team that I view as a good hockey team that's playing poorly. That's why it could be a trap game because they could catch you off guard while you think you're hot crap. You know what I mean? Sure. No, I, um, I get the premise of it. I'm just saying, like, I don't know. I, I, uh, I'm not saying. Obviously, they they very much could lose this game, and like, um, yeah. There's like again, this is a good hockey team. You won five straight. Like, you're you're not gonna win out. You know, um. It's just, yeah, like I, I don't really view a team that got second in their division last year as like a sneaky, like, like, oh, like we might lose and like we shouldn't. Like that's what I view a trap game as is like you should win this game. And um, I, I I don't, while the Wings obviously have a significantly better record on October 24th as the crack and like I don't view, I don't view like a six game sample size is like, oh, well, the Wings are just better than the Kraken in this right. season. And like, that's all there is to it. That's all I'm saying. Well, and you know, obviously this season is different from last season, but remember the sure. Seattle Kraken was the team that broke your big win streak last year. For you sure. went, yeah, you had right. Canada here and then you that. went to Canada and you had a six game win streak and then boom, next thing you know, the Seattle Kraken, Kraken punch you in the mouth in Seattle. I think it was like a six, three loss or yeah. whatever. 
Yeah. I uh, so that. don't let that happen again this year. Different team for the Red Wings, like 11 new players. So not new faces, basically different team altogether. Um, but also special teams wise, the Red Wings are going to so far early in the season, again, early and the Red Wings are going to regress and Seattle will probably get better, but the penalty kill for the, or the power play for the, Seattle Kraken is, I think, like 23rd in the league. Let me double check on that. Well, the Red Wings are second in the league uh, on power play or penalty kill. So if there's a good chance if the Red Wings just take care of their business, they should be able to kill off those Seattle Kraken uh, power plays fairly well. They're 17th in the league on power play, and you're second, you're, you're top 10 in the league in penalty kill. Uh, your 10th in the league in penalty kill. And then power play wise, they have a pretty successful penalty kill, the Seattle Kraken. They're actually six in the league right now, but you are second in the league in power play. So that could be a good matchup. Po your power play against their penalty kill, but vice versa, I, just take care of business. I'm feeling good anytime the Red Wings power play is on the ice at this point. I don't I don't really care who the opponent is. If the power play is on the ice, I'm feeling pretty happy. There you go. Uh, that's the first goal. Give me, give me Sprong. Of course. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I, I want to mix it up. Like it's, it'd be a cop out to go with like Larkin or Debrinket. You know, I think they're going to spread the love. I'm going to go Lucas Raymond. And they're going to spread the long to their uh, love to their winger who got three assists the other night. Nice. So, all right. Any final thoughts? We ball, baby. We ball. We'll be back with a new episode tomorrow. Recapping this one. Same time, same place. Your team. Every day. Every day.